And welcome everybody to uh, my press box. Uh, a little different than the one I work in. Uh, although not really at home, I, I have uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot more of this stuff at home. Um, I'm going to do uh, this feature every week. I, I, I think Wednesdays uh, is the day I'll come in and do this. And we'll, um, I've never, you know, you're probably wondering what am I doing? Well, I guess I'll, I'm here to explain what I'm going to do every week and um, why I'm, today I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm going to do it and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have opinions, I'll have commentaries, I'll tell stories, I'll bring Diet Coke, this is not my sponsor, but uh, it, it's, it's with me everywhere I go it seems like, so, um, so let's have some fun. Um, first of all, uh, what is all this? Well. A big part of my life is stuff. It has been ever since my dad took me to uh, uh, L.A. Dodger baseball games uh, back in the mid-60s. Um, see Sandy Koufax and Drysdale. I love souvenirs. I love the bobbleheads. They used to hand out bobbleheads. There was a bat day. I, I, I got a bat. That was before anybody ever thought that somebody would try to beat each other up with a bat. So everybody got a bat. Um, and helmet day and all this stuff. And I just love hats and and every all the stuff that goes with it. And I and I still um, I did this more when I was single. But whenever I'd go on a Husker trip or a football or basketball trip, the Final Four or wherever, I would always buy something, some kind of souvenir. So I have boxes of stuff at home. It helps. Uh, one of the keys to life is to marry somebody who kind of gets you. And my, my lovely wife, Jennifer, is a, uh, lets me have a big room at home. It's my Big 8 Skyrider room with all my Big 8 stuff and my pennants and um, all kind of weird stuff that I, I will probably bring and share at some point. But, uh, you know, the uh, first time I met her dad, Jerry, I found out maybe why she gets it because he's got more stuff than I do. He's got a Husker uh, shrine in his house and... Uh, so I kind of think, well, maybe maybe this might work because she's used to stuff, and I've got more stuff than just about anybody except Jerry. So um, let me introduce real quick some of my stuff. Uh, this is Alamo Bow 2005, Huskers Wolverines. I went to the souvenir stand, the Alamo Dome, and I've never seen anything like this before. I had to have it. It's got both helmets. It's very cool. Uh, Long before I ever thought those two would play as a conference game. Um, Bobbles, we got uh, Mr. Gibson, Doug, uh, the Bob Father, T.O., Buffett, and Kyle Corver. So um, that's about all I have for Bobbleheads. I might have a couple more at home, but I don't know if I'll bring those or not. Uh, the Johnny Rogers hat, I, 1995, I, I covered the Heisman Trophy ceremony in New York City. They had a souvenir stand, and I bought the Johnny Rogers uh, official hat, um, and I uh, saved it. I love it. This is my pride and joy, the CBA Omaha Racers, signed by my very good friend Steve Eidelman. Um, love that. It's very cool. Bought that at a game, um, which would, would have been in the mid-'90s. So, um, UNO Pennant. I probably need to update that a little bit. Um, got this. Uh, NET did a special on Rosenblatt. They sent a pennant. I kept it. I have a few of these. I used to go to the Blue Jay Bash in the spring. Uh, Kyle Carver spoke. He did photos. He's one of my favorites. We did a photo together. Um, this goes without explanation. We all know what that is. So um, there's one of the Big Ten. I'll probably never have that one. Um, this one, just before, we kind of thought they would be rivals in the, the, the St. Louis Arch rival thing. Uh, this is the 96 championship game, obviously not very memorable for Husker fans, but I loved it. And now that it, we know how the story ended, uh, pretty appropriate. So keep that as well. And I'm going to hang this up at some point if, if, if my good friend Z will allow me. Uh, this is cool. This is, uh, they handed these out when the old Civic went away in 2003, 
and a lot of memories there. Obviously, people who lived in Omaha longer than me have have more memories of uh, the the old Creighton days and um, the Kansas City Omaha Kings, um, which I'll, I'll have a episode on that at some point. We, I used to have Kings tickets in Kansas City, so used to be mad that Omaha stole some of our games. But anyway, just a little introduction to some stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll bring my, it'll be like show and tell. Every week I'll bring them maybe some other kind of thing that I have. Um, and and, and it maybe, maybe it'll tell a story. It, maybe it won't. It'll just be, uh, I, I, I get to show off my stuff. So, all right. Um, why am I doing this? Well, you might be thinking, what is a sports writer doing on video? What's your sports writer Who's, who, who's got a stutter? Well, that's a great question. Um, I thought about that a little bit. And it took me back to, you know, I, I, I guess I've stuttered my whole life, right? I, I don't know when it started. My, uh, my grandfather did, and, and, and I guess he passed on to my mother, he passed on to me. Uh, you know, none of my kids stutter. So it's, to me, it, it was a bigger deal than as you grow older, you, you kind of figure out what it is and um, how it works and uh, why it happens. And um, I've always said, well, it's, it, you know, everybody has something that's different and makes them unique, and this is my thing. But it took me a while to really accept it. There were a lot of times at, uh, at some of the, the, the press conferences where I wouldn't ask questions. And this day, I still don't ask that many questions, although for a different reason. Um, mostly because there's 30, 40 people at these press conferences. I, it takes me a while to ask the question, and I can't get it in because there's Sean Callahan or, 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 or somebody like Sam you know, is asking these, firing these questions. If I, I can't get one in, so I'm always left in the dust. That happens. I usually go outside and if I need something and ask them one on one anyway. I, I kind of prefer to do that too. But, um, um, but no, I thought about this. I, uh, 2000, I think it was 2000, I went to the, uh, I was, I was the, the, the president of the Football Writers Association. And I got to, one well, part of my job was to introduce uh, the Allen Trophy winner on live TV at ESPN at the awards show in Orlando. So I got to do that, and, they, and I, re, I read into the teleprompter. They had a little thing I was supposed to stay, say, and um, I was nervous as heck. I was sweating. It was like Albert Brooks and the uh, movie Broadcast News. I was just things you know, pouring down, shirt was stained. It was a nightmare. And um, I got into it, and I'm, I got on stage, and I'm just about ready to pass out. And I'm supposed to read this thing, and I can't read it because I'm going I'm to stutter. And so I cheated. I, 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 I didn't read what they had. I just went right to the introduction, and the award goes to. And um, it was nobody cared. It's, they wanted to get me the heck off the stage and find out who won the award. Um, but I, 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 I kind of regretted doing that. Uh, I was glad to have it done, but I thought, God, I cheated. I shouldn't have cheated. Um, so I was afraid of stuttering on national TV, and then a few years later, I just had a lightning bolt. After a game, Nebraska game, uh, end of the year, uh, they brought out Matt Slauson to do interviews. And Matt was a great offensive lineman for Nebraska, uh, lasted in the NFL for a long time. Um, just a, just a, a, a gem of a guy. Um, and. You know, I never really talked to them. I love talking to the linemen. They're always good, good guys to talk to. But I never really talked to Matt that much. And maybe I thought, well, he's just quiet. He never does press conferences. He's kind of a guy that he doesn't like to talk. Um, and then the, they, the, the, he went out they, for the last game. I forget what year it was. It might have been 2003 or four, five, right in there somewhere. And um, he came out and did the press conference in front of the whole crowd. So I'm just sitting there in my chair, okay, this will, I've never heard him talk, this will be fun. I ask him a couple questions, he starts stammering, he's, he's, he's tripping over words, he's, he's working it so hard, he's, you know, and um, I wanted to crawl into a hole. I was so uncomfortable, 
I looked around the room at all my colleagues, the TV guys, the writers, and I was just sure they were all laughing and snickering and, and making faces and hiding their... And I looked around and nobody was doing anything. Nobody cared. They were listening to his answer. They were patient. They were very respectful. And it just hit me and said, man, maybe I've been wrong all these years. Maybe people don't care. And uh, maybe it's just, it's okay. It's okay to stutter, right? So uh, I've always, I, I got to know Matt after that. I went right up to him and we talked about, uh, about stuttering. And um, I ended up writing a, interviewing him, writing a column about it. And, um, you know, it, one of my uh, uh, unique you know, relationships w with an athlete that I've never had. Um, I, I, I spoke to a group at uh, St. Louis School here in Omaha, and I actually invited Matt to, to be my guest and speak to the kids. Uh, of course, the Husker football guy walks in, they all go crazy. They listen to everything. But uh, I, I thought that was, you know, he really helped me through that. And uh, I thought I just thought I'd share that story. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll probably have some time here, but I don't think anybody cares. And if you do, then, you know, I, I guess get over it or don't, whatever. But um, finally, um, why am I here? Well, I've been doing this. Uh, I graduated from college in 1980, uh, but I don't have a Missouri thing, do I? And I kind of, well, here, from, I graduated from Missouri in 1980. I went to Nebraska in 1991. I covered all these guys in between. Um, but um, I've been doing this for a long time. When you think about where college football was in the, er, the mid-70s when I was started doing it as a, uh, a as some kind of punk reporter for the the, the man eater at Missouri, uh, driving around the Big Eight in my old car, um, just loving college football, loving the whole thing, uh, and you know, I, I guess that's that's over 40 years uh, that I, I I guess I my first job I started at the, the Kansas City Star right out of college in 1980, and uh, so that's 42 years, right? So I'm still doing this and. You know, people will say, well, if you've been doing it that long, you must be a dinosaur. Well, I guess I'm guilty of that. I, I, I don't think of myself as a dinosaur. You know, you're still thinking of yourself as, as kind of young. Of course, a couple of those 10 hour uh, drives in the Big Ten will take that. You know, you, you all of a sudden you start to feel pretty old after those, some of those drives to Champaign and uh, uh, Madison. But, um, um, I still love what I do, and if, uh, you know, I've, I've never worked a day in my life, and, and nowadays, you know what, you, the, the, the job is podcasts. Now, when I started, it, I, had a, I had a typewriter I carried around, and a big old suitcase called a, a telecopier. You put the thing on the table, and you took paper out of your typewriter, you put in the telecopier, you put a phone in, and, and it went around like this, spun around, and set the story to the office, uh, one page at a time. So that's, you know, now it's boom, 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 and people send things on their phone, and uh, it's a lot easier, right? But um, I don't have to carry that telecopier around. But So I guess my point is we're doing podcasts now, video. If, if, if I'm a dinosaur, then I'll be a dinosaur doing podcasts. I'll be a dinosaur doing video. I'll be a dinosaur. Uh, I, I've got off Twitter, and I may not go back. I don't know. I don't. I. Feel, I don't really think uh, Twitter adds to my job. But <coughs> excuse me. Um, anyway, the point is, whatever I got to do to do this job that I love so much and share the stories with you, the reader, of all our all of our great sports teams and great people. Um, I'm going to do it because I love, uh, never worked a day in my life and I want to keep going uh, for as long as I can and um, as long as I love it and I still love it. So um, that's all for now. Um, I will share uh, my thoughts on the, the, the Husker transfer portal maybe, uh, Husker hoops, Creighton hoops, uh, hockey, uh, Nebraska women's hoops, uh, all that stuff. Uh, Frost has got to announce some coaching. Um, I'll tell you this, I'll say this real quick, um, they're talking about a quarterback uh, who doesn't have much experience, maybe he's interested in Nebraska, 
I think they should get a quarterback who's experienced. I really do. I don't care how many stars he has next to his name. They have to win next year, and I really think a veteran quarterback would be the most uh, – that would be the best thing that, that they could do with Mark Wimple um, because he's experienced too and because they got to hit their ground running in, in the spring. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe by next Wednesday when we do this again, um, we'll, we'll have some answers and I'll have some more comments. So thank you for uh, joining me and uh, hope you join me every week. And we'll have some fun, a lot of fun. Um, I thought about doing a bar. We can't really do a bar. So this is like a desk. It's got, I don't have, all, have more stuff on it. And um, this will be the press box. And uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, until then, the, the press box is open. Thank you.